الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه جمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان ليوم الدين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته On behalf of ILF, I would like to welcome you to another session from this Hadith Seminar on the 40 Hadith of Al-Imam Al-Nawi Rahimullah And we are now on Hadith number 25 which is on the topic of Sadaqah so let us begin the recitation of the hadith. An Abi Darwin Radu An Aidan Anna Unasan min Ashabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Kalu li Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Rasulullah Dahaba Ahlu Duthur Bil Ujur Yusalluna Kama Nusalli Wayasumuna Kama Nasumu Wayasadakuna Bifuduli Amalihim Kal أَوَلَيْسَ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ مَا تَصَدَّقُونَ إِنَّ بِكُلِّ تَصْبِيحَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَكُلِّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَكُلِّ تَحْمِيدَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَكُلِّ تَحْلِيلَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَأَمْرُ بِمَعْرُوفٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَنَحْيٍ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَفِي بُضْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةٍ قَالُوا أَرَعَيْتُمْ لَوْ وَضَعَهَا فِي الْحَرَامِ أَكَانَ عَلَيْهِ بِزْرِ فَكَدَالِكَ إِذَا وَضَعَهَا فِي الْحَلَالِ كَانَ لَهُ عَجْرِ رواه مسلم Narrated Abu Darwad An who said that some people from the companions of the Prophet wasallam said to the Prophet wasallam, O Messenger of Allah the rich have taken all the rewards they observe the prayer as we do, and they keep the fast as we do, and they give sadaqah from their surplus wealth. Upon this he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Hasn't Allah made for you a course by which you can also do sadaqah? Indeed, every tasbih is a sadaqah, every takbir is a sadaqah, every tahmeed is a sadaqah, every tahleel is a sadaqah, enjoying the good is a sadaqah, forbidding the evil is a sadaqah. And one of you having relations with your spouse is a sadaqah. They said, O Messenger of Allah, is there reward for him who satisfies his passion among us? He said, tell me, if he were to fulfill it to something forbidden, would it not be a sin upon him? Similarly, if he were to fulfill it lawfully, it would be a reward for him. And this is in Sahih Muslim. Where this hadith begins with the some of the companions, and these were the poor impoverished companions who said, Ya Rasulullah, Dahaba Ahlul Duthur Bil Ujur. The rich have taken all the rewards. And so this hadith further defines the concept of sadaqah for us, for the Muslims. Here, the poor of the companions of the Prophet wasallam thought that giving sadaqah could only be done through money. They were disheartened at the reality that they could not give their wealth to earn more reward like their wealthier companions because they were so impoverished. They did not have anything. And this hadith also gives us a glimpse into the attitude and the piety of the Sahaba wa arda. However, the Prophet ﷺ gave them the glad tidings that all good deeds can be considered as sadaqah, yani charitable actions. And he said, so Salam, أَوَلَيْسَ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ مَا تَصَدَّقُونَ Has Allah not made a course for you to give the sadaqah? By hearing these words, they were surprised, obviously. But how can we give sadaqah? Then he continued the Prophet ﷺ, إِنَّ بِكُلِّ تَصْبِيحَةٍ sadaqah. Indeed, for every tasbih, yani, subhanallah, okay, is a charity. وَكُلِّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ sadaqah. And every saying, Allahu Akbar is a sadaqah. Wa kulli tahmeedatin sadaqah. And every alhamdulillah is a sadaqah. Wa kulli tahleelatin sadaqah. La ilaha illallah. Or every time you say that, of course, is a sadaqah. Wa amrin bi ma'roofin sadaqah. And every commanding a good is a sadaqah. Wa nahyin an munkarin sadaqah. And every 
forbidding of the evil is a sadaqah. And even wafi bode ahadikum sadaqah. And every time one has relations with a spouse is a sadaqah. So here, the Prophet ﷺ is expanding the meaning of sadaqah to these devoted companions of the Prophet ﷺ. In general, sadaqah is translated or is meant or is understood to be that of charity, yani giving wealth, giving something from your possessions. However, here Rasulullah has expanded this to include even the tasbih that someone does. So even if they're not technically helping someone else, they're helping themselves by glorifying the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different forms. And we talked about the dhikr in depth and its great ajr as well. And now it is also included as sadaqah for us subhanAllah. So there's other versions of this hadith. In another hadith narrated by a different sahabi Abu Huraira Duan, recorded by Bukhari is mentioned explicitly that the questioners were from the poor of the muhajirun. Okay. So here, some people came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, the wealthy people will get higher grades and will have permanent enjoyment. And they pray like us and they fast as we do. They have more money by which they perform the hajj and the umrah. Fight and struggle in Allah's cause and give in sadaqah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Shall I not tell you a thing upon which if you acted, you would catch up with those who you have surpassed you. Nobody would overtake you and you would be better than the people amongst whom you live except those who would do the same. Say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah and Allahu Akbar 33 times each after every compulsory prayer. And another hadith, the Allah Akbar is mentioned 34 times. And there are other versions of Hadith of Abu Dar Radian as well, which show a similar meaning. One of them stating, You're smiling in the face of your brother is a sadaqah. Commanding good and forbidding evil is sadaqah. You're giving directions to a man lost in the land is a sadaqah for you. You're seeing for a man with bad eyesight or bad sight is a sadaqah for you. Your removal of a rock, a thorn, or a bone from the road is sadaqah for you. You're pouring what remains from your bucket into the bucket of your brother is sadaqah for you. And this is narrated in Jami Al-Tirmidhi and also Gwede As-Sahih. Okay. So going forward, another hadith yet on this topic narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah in the collection of Sahih Bukhari states, Kullu ma'roofin sadaqah or every good act is an act of sadaqah. So subhanallah, any good act can count as sadaqah. Furthermore, in another hadith narrated by Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, which discusses the money spent on one's wife as sadaqah, where he says, the Prophet ﷺ, إِنَّكَ لَن تُنْفِكَ نَفَقَطًا تَبْتَغِي بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أُجِرْتَ عَلَيْهَا حَتَّى مَا تَجْعَلُوا فِي فَمِمْ رَأَتِكْ you will be rewarded for whatever you spend for Allah's sake, even if it were a morsel which you put in your wife's mouth. And this is some an obligation, obviously, to feed your family and your spouse. And here you'll get ajr for it. So going forward, in another hadith, the Prophet Wasallam, and this is there by Anas bin Malik, mentioned that there is none amongst the Muslims who plants a tree or sows seeds and then a bird or a person or an animal eats from it, but is regarded as a sadaqah for him. And this is in Al-Bukhari. So even planting a tree which helps the environment, helps the animals, and perhaps even a person is a sadaqah on behalf of that person. So subhanAllah, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us, even if we're doing a small deed which is considered petty, and insignificant, he, even he subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards this person for doing an act of good. Okay, this is the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sadaqah is of, in general, three types. It is often, again, translated as charity or alms, but that is a limited meaning. Okay, when you look at this hadith, we'll see that that is a limited scope of sadaqah, even though that is the mainstream meaning. Okay, so sadaqah means to, number one, send good and benefit to others. Okay, that's the second meaning. So according to Ibn Rajab, sadaqah in its broad sense can be divided also into two types. The first type is 
spending for the sake of Allah. The second type is encompassing acts of goodness and kindness towards others. And this includes again a whole category, so many different things. It can include teaching knowledge, removing anything harmful from the roads that was mentioned in a couple of the hadith here, or pathways, commanding good and forbidding evil, helping one's fellow brother, etc. It can also include helping others through dua. So if, even if you cannot be there physically, you're there doing dua for them, and this can also count as sadaqah. Subhanallah. And there are many seemingly trivial acts that count as sadaqah that we should apply in our lives, many of which benefit others. A good example of this type of ibadah is from a hadith that was already mentioned, which is smiling, smiling to your brother or sister. Because of this hadith, it is common to see Muslims smiling and greeting each other, or it should be the case. Unfortunately, many times it is not the case. You're in certain communities where there is no interaction, you don't feel the Islamic spirit. And this is unfortunate because the Prophet ﷺ, he encouraged everyone to be friendly, particularly you know, between our brothers and sisters. We should be friendly, we should say the salam, we should smile, not just go to the masjid just for the salah and have no interaction. No, spread the khair, share the khair. And this allows for salam in a more peaceful and benevolent society which we need. Not smile, not saying the salam, it only primes us for division. So due to their smile and their associated etiquette, they have a positive influence on the behavior of others. And on the larger scale, this actually contributes to creating a pleasant environment within the Muslim community. So all of us should look for the opportunity to perform these acts of kindness for our community. And these may seem trivial and sometimes even denigrate or looked at as being medial, something which the person should not lower themselves to. But this is a arrogant attitude. So these acts may seem trivial, but they have great rewards as we've seen in this hadith and also Inshallah, we're going to see the same concept repeat in the next hadith from this session. Okay. Going forward, okay, on this Islamic concept of sadaqah. So we see from this hadith, this beautiful hadith, that dhikr is a sadaqah that only benefits the self, just remembering Allah, saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, is a sadaqah for you. And we should remember Allah frequently. The best time is to do it in the morning and the evening such as after the prayers. Every Muslim should maintain and observe the dhikr in order to become among those who are described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as dhakirin. Allahumma jalla min dhakirin. Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is described as giving sadaqah in the hadith when the sahaba were asked about shortening the prayers during the traveling. The Prophet said, this is sadaqah that Allah has given to you, so accept it, to take it. This is narrated in Sahih Muslim. Furthermore, a third type of sadaqah is not doing actions that harm people. In this way, people are benefited by being out of harm's way. And narrated by Abu Dhar, where the Prophet said, "Takufu sharraka ani nasi fa innaha sadaqatun minka ala nafsik." The Prophet said, "Refrain from doing mischief to the people." That is sadaqah of your person on your behalf, Sahih Muslim and also Sahih Bukhari Mutafakkan Alayhi. So, if the person that you're advising is not of good character, is not regular in their prayers, and they may be an open sinner, you can encourage him to avoid doing the evils to protect the people from their mischief or their wrongdoing. So just start with that. Start with not doing evil to people, even that is a sadaqah. And sadaqah is rewarded on the condition that comes with the intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So you're not doing sadaqah to make your reputation better in the society. And this is when that good deed, that small little thing that you're doing, such as planting a tree, smiling in the face of your brother, becomes a sadaqah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يرى في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما There is no good in most of their secret talks except one who exhorts 
to a good deed of sadaqah or goodness or a conciliation between people. To him who does this seeking the pleasure of Allah, we shall soon give him a reward of high value. Okay. So we should not do these charitable actions without having taqwa, having the conscience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and certainly not for people to notice. However, if nobody is doing an action, if everyone's lack of days ago about doing good, then it's no problem also to do good, but also show people that it is good to do good. Right? Encourage people sometimes by acting. Be the first to clean up the streets, pick up a, something which is blocking the road to the masjid or any other road. Sometimes what happens is that when you're driving, there's a big garbage go in the middle because of the wind and it's better just to, if you can to stop the car and just take it out of the road because it's an obstruction it's something which is potentially dangerous so small thing like that inshallah is a sadaqah if you see for example someone left the trunk of a car open accidentally you know it was accident close it so that their belongings are safe and secure stuff like that we have to do these actions because many good deeds are left undone so it is no problem. In fact, we should try to encourage everyone to do good deeds. And this then becomes bi'idnillah sadaqah jari as well. So going forward in this hadith, the impoverished sahaba said, Qalu, ya Rasulullah, ayati ahaduna shahwatahu wa yakunu lahu fiha ajr? They said, O Messenger of Allah, is there a reward for him who satisfies his passion among us? Ya'ni who has relations with his wife. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أرأيتم لو وضعها في الحرام أكان عليه وزر. The Prophet says, "Tell me if he were to fulfill it in something forbidden, would it not be a sin upon him?" فكذلك إذا وضعها في الحلال كان له أجر. Beautiful response. The Prophet says, "Similarly, if he were to fulfill lawfully, it would be a reward for him." So, Bud in the Arabic language, it means part of something. However, the Arabs would use this word to indicate part of the body, that is, a person's private parts. This would be out of modesty. Okay, just to not mention this shameful word outright. So, what is part of this hadith means that to have relations with one's spouse is a sadaqah. And the Sahaba were so astonished by this. Okay, this means that what a person does from this type of action, if he does it in a halal way, and keeps away from haram, then he will be rewarded for that. And the scars are differed upon whether this person will be rewarded without an intention or not. And some scars said that he will be rewarded without intention. But the best opinion, and Allah knows best, is that we should have a niyyah for the action we're doing. And inshallah, if we're doing it fi ta'atillah, in that halal way, and knowing that this is halal, inshallah, this will be rewarded and Allah wa'alam, Allah knows best. Going forward in the shara of this beautiful hadith, okay, other lessons we learn is the eagerness, right, the hirs of the companions for ibadah and to be ahead and to gain the ajr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not want any stone unturned in their quest to increase their level and their closeness to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 148 He subhanahu wa ta'ala says To each is a goal to which Allah turns him Then race towards all that is good Wheresoever you are, Allah will bring you together. Indeed, Allah has power over all things. According to Ibn Rajab, this hadith proves that the companions of the Prophet were so eager to do good deeds and things which were sadaqah. They all had the strong desire to do khair in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of the poor companions were so distressed that they could not obtain the thawab and the rewards of sadaqah like those companions who had wealth. They were able to do the other obligatory and the supererogatory or the mustahab salah, the fasting, not just the fasting, but the mustahab fast and other ibadat. Thus they complained to the Prophet So 
all of us, every Muslim, should learn and emulate the eagerness of these beautiful companions of the Prophet Wasallam, the best generation to have walked the face of the earth. And when it comes to performing all forms and acts of ibadah, they did it in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith should push us to be eager to do great deeds even if you're incapable of doing them. So even having the intention, if you're in an impoverished condition, do what these companions were told to do. Okay, and have that strong intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even the small deeds, the things which are deemed by people to be menial and insignificant turn into great rewards. With a strong desire for good, inshallah will yield for us a great reward. Okay. So these were indeed the greatest generation that lived because of their piety and their striving for the good. So other lessons from this hadith. And we look at this term called ghibtah. Okay, what is ghibta? So here in examining this hadith, we see a unique quality among the Sahaba that they had ghibta, which is the good jealousy, not the bad jealousy. Ghibta means to have a desire to have the good qualities that others have without it being taken away from them. And that's what hasad is. Hasad is to want something that your associate, your brother, your companion has and also wish they be taken away from them. Uh, one of the sources, root cause of evil in general is hasad which the shaitan had. But ghibta is the good jealousy. So for example, if you see someone who is very knowledgeable, try to be knowledgeable like that person. Okay, but also not have any type of thing in your heart of jealousy that it should be taken away or, or have the notion that why does he have knowledge? You know, Why can't I have the same knowledge? You know, having this type of condescending attitude. No, this is a fadl from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to whoever he wishes without reckoning, without hisab. Okay. And this is also a test for us as well. You know, we cannot have any type of jealousy and certainly not hasad because this is a haram. Even if we have this emotion in our heart and not even act on it, it can become an evil. And it, we can be punished for hasad. This is one of the few things that if we possess it and do not try to get rid of, it can cause us to have a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the same also holds true for a person who is able to do much ibadah, much sadaqah, able to always make it to the masjid. Try to be like that person but also have no negative feelings about that person in your heart. And try to befriend that person also because their iman and their akhlaq and also their barakah inshallah will also spill over and also you'll also get some of that goodness as well, bi'idnillah. So thus, ghibta is a good and desirable quality since it influences our attitudes and behavior in a good way. Hasad, on the other hand, is when someone feels envy, jealousy and resentment against another who is bestowed with some privilege or blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course. And to make things worse, one with hasad wishes that this privilege be taken away from the other person due to their hatred and resentment and evil quality. This is exactly what Iblis possesses. The Prophet Wasallam says, avoid envy for envy devours the good deeds just as the fire devours fuel. And this hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira and in Sunan Abu Dawood or Abu Dawood, but however it is greater as weak. Furthermore, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives His bounty to anyone He chooses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah, and Allah bestows His abundance without measure on whomever He wills. So we should not feel, and cannot feel any objections to Allah's plan. For these reasons and more, hasad is a very evil feeling. And having this feeling or attitude is a major sin if we do not suppress it and it comes upon us. So going forward, other lessons from this hadith on sadaqah. So actions which may be done to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are plenty and diverse. Okay, people have differing abilities, preferences and strengths, but everyone has the ability to perform some type of good action. Abu Dhabi cites a dialogue between Abdullah al-Umari, a famous Zahid, knowing for his piety and his devotion to ibadah, and also between Imam Malik, rahimahumallah. And Imam Malik, of course, he's the founder of the Maliki Madhab. He was a scholar of Medina at his time or during his time. Omari wrote a letter to Imam Malik encouraging him to worship in solitude and abandon the gatherings of people for giving knowledge. And this is what Imam Malik used to do. He used to give people the ilm, give people the hadith of the Prophet and teach them the sunnah of the Prophet. 
Imam Malik replied to al Umri's letter by stating that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided the acts of deeds among people as He has divided the risk among them. Some are giving talents and knowledge and how to spread it while others are giving talents and sadaqah, fasting and so on. So what he was given, Imam Malik, was no less than what al Umri was given, yani to do great deeds and sadaqah, uh, ibadat, etc. And he hoped that both of them or on the right path to do the things that pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, Imam Malik responded to Abdullah al-Umari's letter by saying that, you know, you can continue to do what you're doing. I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. We both are on the same path. Okay? I understand you want me to go in seclusion, but what I'm doing also is no less important than what you're doing. So all of us have talents. Let us define and refine our talents and be superstars in what we do in Shisabilla. So from the lives of the companions, uh, we see that each of them, each of the Sahaba excelled in doing certain actions and good deeds. And this shows that the talents are divided among the people. For example, the talent of Ibn Mas'ud was the Qur'an. He chose the recitation of the Qur'an over the non-obligatory fasting because it made him weak and prevented him from the recitation of the Qur'an. So thus he chose to recite the Qur'an over the Sadaqah fasting, for example. Okay. And only a few people were able to do everything and excel in everything. And one of these was none other than Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. He was gifted with the talent to perform all the forms of ibadah and excelled in doing them. The Prophet Wasallam indicated Abu Bakr's great unique status in the following hadith where the Prophet Wasallam said, Those who engage in prayer will be invited to enter the gate of prayer. Those who take part in jihad will be invited to enter the gate of jihad. Those who give sadaqah will be invited to enter the gate of sadaqah. And those who observe the fast will be invited to enter by the gate of Riyan. Abu Bakr Siddiq said, O Messenger Allah, is it necessary that a person be invited through one of these gates? Will anyone be invited to enter through all these gates? The Messenger also some said, Yes, and I hope that you will be one of them. And this is narrated by Abu Huraira in Sahih Muslim. So, conclusion of this hadith and its highlights. This hadith broadens the concept of sadaqah, essentially extending it to all good actions. Furthermore, from this hadith, we see that even permissible actions, such as relations with one's spouse, can be a sadaqah. Scholars, however, affirm that these permissible actions become a sadaqah when they are done with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they cannot just be done ritualistically or routinely without any type of connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or connection to doing something in concert with the Sunnah of the Prophet So thus from this hadith, many simple acts that we do in our daily life can be turned into ibadah if we do them with good actions and are mindful of Allah. At the end of the day, this will yield for us a great reward. And also seeing others who do good should motivate us similar to how the Sahaba were motivated. We should maintain an eagerness to do good such that they are done regularly and that they will benefit us in the hereafter and also those around us and encourage those around us to do that as well. So with this, we will close. Jazakallah khair for your patience and your attention to this hadith. And we look forward to, inshallah, continuing this session till the end. Subhanaka lahum hamdik wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa at wa sukhfa kutubu wa ilaika salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.